and welcome to Tune to Zamgazin talk show. Today we are live at Solutions Hub and we'll be talking to the CEO and co-founder of Solution Hub in Nyamuka, Zambia. And that is no other than Joseph Chakopo. The topic that we'll be discussing today is very, very, very interesting and is dear to my heart because I've seen so many startups start and fail. So today we're going to be talking about why startups fail and ways in which they can improve. So let's hear it from Joseph. Hello everybody, I, I trust you're, you're, you're doing well and uh, keeping safe amidst uh, the COVID-19 and uh, obviously keeping warm as well, it's quite cold. Uh, so my name is uh, Joseph Chakopo and I'm the Chief Executive Officer as well as Co-Founder of uh, Nyamoka Africa Solutions which is um, an incubation hub and uh, as well as uh, we, we provide pre-accelerator services to, to startups and generally the, the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Okay, so today um, I'm, I'm privileged to be on this show and I'll be tackling a really pertinent um, issue which has to do with what makes uh, startups fail. There are quite a number of um, reasons that lead to startup failure, especially for, for early stage startups. Uh, statistics say that at least 90% of startups fail in the first uh, five years of, uh, of doing business. And some of the reasons that lead to startup failure is uh, number one, uh, the business model. When we look at a business model, we are really looking at a roadmap that um, clearly details how that this business will remain profitable, how that is going to make its money. So for example, if, if, if as a business you, you run a school, I think your, your business model would have to revolve around uh, school fees that you would be charging the, uh, the pupils. So now, I think more often than not, many startups do not go deep into uh, trying to really understand how they are going to make the money. Most of the startups just um, uh, dwell at the base. They, they do not take the time to go deep and have more than one way of making money. Peradventure that that only route was, uh, was, to be, was to be shut, what happens for the business. So it is very, very um, uh, cardinal for every startup to identify how they are going to make money and likewise identify who their target customers are. And obviously they would have to equally um, uh, tie whatever value that they are offering to those uh, customers. Are these customers going to be able to pay for, what, for, for the services or the products that they are offering? So in a nutshell, the business model is something that has to uh, be critically looked at by all startups. They have to understand how are we going to make the money. And in the same vein, equally uh, look at uh, the value chain. What value are we offering to the market? Where is our money going to come from? So that's reason number one. Reason number two is, um, has to do with the market. More often than not, um, many startups fail to uh, validate, or rather, many startups fail to uh, go through the validation process. And the validation process entails um, clearly articulating based on facts. Um, they need to validate, number one, the problem that they are, that they are, that they are trying to solve. The question is, is this a valid problem? Is this a problem that really exists in the first place? Because at times, um, as an entrepreneur, you might be seated there and thinking this is a problem, not knowing that on the market, in the marketplace, it's, it's not viewed as a problem. It's just one of those things. So there is a need that you, you conduct some fact-finding uh, research to really state to, to really identify whether this is a problem and whether or not your target market could uh, and also look at it as a problem. Another aspect or, or rather another dimension to that is um, validating your market, validating your target uh, market. 
you need to go through the process to to understand and um, to, to really understand are the people that I, I am targeting the people that could actually pay for this because you might um, be targeting people who might not even be the primary users of, of, of a product they might just be the secondary users so there is need that you identify and validate are your the market as well are they willing to pay for this solution in the first place do they have the capacity to pay for it but beyond that you would now have to equally identify um, how much would they be willing to pay for this so the entire validation process entails you engaging your uh, prospective clients engaging the prospective users of, of your service or your product so that was reason number two reason number three has to do with um, with the management team it is widely said that um, if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far go with a team but beyond that there is need to uh, not just assemble a team and endeavor to go far it's about how are we going to get to that point so there is need in the quest to build a team there is need to build a team that has diverse skill sets your team has to be one that complements each other and in the same vein you 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 would need to ensure that um, that that your, your your team is 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 skewed in different uh, areas i mean you should be looking at one that has the the the, the technical competences, the marketing, the, the accounting, the finance, uh, the strategy as well, because all these are core business areas that you do not want to, to, to overlook. Because, um, I mean, I think you, there is need that as entrepreneurs, we realize that uh, you cannot do everything on your own and you would obviously need to build a team around you to to, to help complement what you're doing and equally people that you're going to collaborate with. Reason number four uh, that leads to startup failure is, um, is the inability to, to pivot. And I think this reason is, th this, uh, this reason is quite relevant in, um, in, the, in the current times that we're in, in, the, in times of COVID. I think most, if not all businesses have had to some extent needed to pivot their business models. Just look at how that uh, all businesses at least, most businesses at least have had to um, incorporate the aspect of e-commerce. Most businesses now have had to uh, resort to having to sell goods online. Uh, they've had to increase uh, their, um, um, their, their, their visibility on Facebook, uh, begin to market their, their goods and services uh, on online platforms. So, so now imagine a, a scenario where this, this company is, um, what was not in a position to, to pivot their business model. All that they knew is we sell our goods and services in the conventional way and the conventional way entails that we, 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 we send our sales representatives on the market. But now here's, a, here's the situation with COVID-19. There's all this lockdown. People cannot uh, move freely. That then entails that you'd have to do things virtually now. I mean, this, the same would go for, for, for events companies. Most of them have had to resort to having and hosting their events virtually. So now imagine if all these companies did, did not pivot their business models to, to incorporate the aspect of, uh, of technology, e-commerce and the like. So what I'm trying to say is it's very important that um, all startups are quick to pivot their business models as it when need arises, lest uh, you are uh, kicked out of business and uh, cease to, to exist. So my last point uh, has to do with cash. Like they say, uh, cash is king. There is need that um, that we as, as startup founders, as entrepreneurs, endeavor to manage the, the limited and scarce financial resources that we have in a prudent manner. That entails that um, we need to have some some financial uh, some financial and accounting uh, systems in place. How do we manage the inflow and the outflow of cash? We need to be able to to clearly track 
the, the expenses, the incomes that, uh, that, we, that we have as a, as a business or, or as, a, as a company. So that at the end of the day, you should be able to sit down, look at your books and clearly state whether or not you're making a profit or a loss. If you're not, if you're, if you're making a profit, then well and good. If you're making a loss, then you now begin to um, analyze what could we cut out, what could we uh, build on, and the like. So there is, uh, it's, it's very important that uh, all entrepreneurs are able to um, have financial uh, uh, systems in place that help them clearly track their their incomes and uh, expenses. Because at the same time. Um, there comes a time in, in the journey of a startup that they would need to, to scale up, uh, get some investors perhaps, and any investor will always ask one question, uh, can I have a look at your financials, can I have a look at your balance sheet, your, your, your profit and loss and the like, and if we do not have all those basic things at, at an early stage, it will prove to be quite difficult to get um, the, the necessary funding or to get some investors on board because then they will not be able to entrust us with, um, with, with the resources because then they begin to doubt our ability to, uh, to manage the financials. So it's very important that all startups uh, have the, the financial uh, systems in place to be able to help them um, track all their uh, incomes and expenses. So um, that was something that I thought I should share with you just a few um, issues, a few reasons what that lead to, to the failure of uh, all startups. Once again, my name has been Joseph Chakopo, and it's been a pleasure being with you today. Thank you. That's it from us. I hope you had fun, and I hope you've learned one or two things. For more exciting topics, for more educating topics, please do join us next week. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, as well as watch out for more videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you.